So with the rafters for the roof carved, I mocked two up in place. You can see I cut the bird's mouth out of the bottom, and then I could get the angle for the top and start transferring that to all my other pieces. Same thing with the bird's mouth. This is obviously not a house. Um, I don't cut a ton of rafters. So I was the main goal of this was to get them close enough to be stable, but it, um, they didn't have to be perfect. You can see I'm just using a piece of wood to kind of get rough measurements for that bird's mouth, and then I'm just towing them into place and then working my way around the top. Now the one problem is, is each one of these, because um, I have the door opening in the front is a little bit different. So you can see once I get those first three in place, I have to start getting a little more creative by cutting um, angles at the top as well as beveling the back so that everything will fit into place. So these other two on the side are about the same and um, I put those in place as well. So then I just started gluing and attaching all the pieces. Those first two were obviously the easiest ones to do. This one out of the back wasn't that uh, bad either. But then after that, I had to start doing the back bevel and the triangle. So um, they were a little bit of a loose joint at first. So I just have a sander next to that. And as I glue and screw these into place, um, I could just kind of clean up that joint. I actually didn't glue these into place at this point because I wanted the roof to be detachable at first so I could mess around with the insides. But as I got further along with the project, I kind of found that wasn't really going to happen. Um, it was it, it needed to be totally secure, so I do end up uh, gluing all those in place. So that's kind of the mess of bevels and angles I have at the top. So then I decided I wanted to curve or over these edges so they weren't totally square, so I marked center on all of them and then just kind of gradually curved over the edges so they're a little bit of a nicer shape. Um, this ended up being quite fruitful because I do end up completely covering these at the end. If there was to be one major thing that I would change um, during this whole process is, I would have made the roof ex uh, extend a little further over the edges of the top. It would have made the construction of the roof slightly easier. So then I had to start thinking about attaching um, roof pieces, and this is where these two parts that are sticking out came uh, started to get in the way. So not only did I cut those off, but I also trimmed the front. I decided I wanted the, the bottom, which essentially would be almost the fascia there, to be a curve. So you can see how I have that one curve already set in place. I'm just going through and roughly making marks. Like I said, this isn't a house. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of cutting out a curve there. And then I have these thin strips of pine and I could just slide them into place and they'll sit against that, that flat portion in the back there. And then I just use a mixture of sawdust and putty to hold everything in place. Now once the roof pieces are all on and I, I actually fill that void in the back with a little bit of spray foam, these ended up being very, very secure. I'm not nervous about them cracking over time. You can see I just have this putty that will fill in all, all the gaps. So then I decided to put a center partition down this piece so that it would be easier to do um, the roofing material. So I just laid them on top, made rough marks for the triangle where it's going to hit the top part of the rafters, and then just roughly cut everything down to size. And then I can just pop all those into place. I'm adding a backer on the bottom of this because you could see I have this um, thin masonite with, with the white coating on it is going the tr in all those spaces and then I'm going to put some fake shingles on there. So in order to, to hold that masonite in place I added that backer in there and there were some slight adjustments to be had with the curve here just so that everything sat, sat flat. So I just trim those down a little bit. And then I used a piece of paper to get the shape of the triangle. They're all a little bit different because all these triangles, like I said, because the front door opening is wider, um, all of the triangles are a little bit different. So I just used paper to get those angles on each one when the dimension changed. And then I could just cut the, that bit of base and I out on the table saw. This is material I had laying around. That was mostly what I used for this. So um, you could really use anything. And then I could just kind of put that piece in place. And then before 
attaching it, I also put um, a, a, a little shim on the inside of those two rafters for the masonite to sit on as well. And I could glue everything in place. And then I add, I start adding a ton of caulk on this, this piece at this point. All these seams will also have caulk. So then um, these bottom pieces started to get in the way because I want to trim out the bottom so it's flush with the edges of the window. So I just went through and trimmed all those off. And then with the same material I made the base out of, you can see I'm just working my way around the shape, cutting angles freehand, and then attaching them all. I'm using caulk in place of glue in a lot of these circumstances because this wood will move around a lot, especially being outside. And type on three is not fully waterproof. It's water resistant. So if you use that in the joints, it's more likely to pull apart than caulk. You can see I screw everything on the inside edge. So for the shingles, I don't film it, but um, I have these scrap pieces of a, of a fence that my neighbor gave me. And I just rip them down into strips and then cut them into these uh, long, elongated rectangles. And that's all I'm using to, to add the shingles. This is pretty much just a process of, of nailing them all in. You can see when I start the second layer, I'm using a skinnier piece so that they overlap properly like an actual, actual roof. And at the edges, when I need to cut angles, I just use some aviator snips and this is thin enough, it comes right off. So I just worked my way up, up um, all the triangles in order to do this. And then at the end, I could, I could trim this flush with the curve I have on the bottom, and that leaves everything with a nice, even finish. So I like the ideal of the exposed rafters on this piece, but with the thickness of the roof, they were actually a little more sunken than I would have liked, and I was nervous about water getting in there. So what I decided to do was add um, a nice amount of caulk at the seam so I didn't have to worry about it, and then skin the top of it with some of the same roofing material, these thin strips, kind of created a decorative element. It still left um, the look I was going for with the exposed rafters, but it will help a lot with keeping water, water out of there. So it's just three pieces kind of stacked on top of each other to, to cover all of that. So then I'm making a, a, a cap for the top. I went back to my original pattern in order to get the triangles. This didn't have to be perfect, so I did not spend a lot of time figuring out tri triangular math or bevels or anything like that. I started by just making, shortening um, the pieces there and cutting out a bunch of triangles. Once again, this is the same uh, fence material. I was using this because I liked the fact that it was kind of rough on the outside. It's already pre-stained even though I ended up staining it again anyways, but it's also pressure treated lumber, which is nice. Then once I had the triangles, I just used these scrap pieces to elevate it so it will cut a back bevel on the back edge. Um, this is not a, a definite angle. I just kind of used those pieces in order to cut it. So you can see now when you put all these together, they'll, they'll bevel in on each other. Now, the way that this worked out, the last piece was too big because you're, you're cheating them in. So all I did was took that last piece and I cut it down to size and added the bevel and that fit in place as well. It's a little bit short, so I just went through and trimmed all the triangles. If this was a piece of fine furniture, I would have spent the time to do the math. But since this is just a cap on the top of, uh, of a lending library and I could cheat that shorter triangle to the back, um, I was happy with the way that this turned out. So then I'm just adding some glue on all those angles to glue it together and then I'm just adding some little shims on the back with a bunch of caulk and glue and I'll also put some brads into this just to make it a little sturdier. And then I'll trim off that excess at the end. But that's basically the cap. It just sits on top covering covering up all the the rafters and stuff at the top so then i decided i didn't like how square these windows looked so i decided to round over the edges the easiest way to do this was to take a chainsaw and get rid of the bulk of the material which is what i'm doing right here just cutting down the edges a little bit and then i could go and clean it up with an angle grinder now i liked the angles of the the pieces it kind of looks a little um Art Deco, like the Chrysler building, and I did like that, so you could see I'm kind of keeping the angle of it, but cleaning it up. 
and then I'm going to be adding plexi on the inside of these so this is pretty easy I had some plexi scraps which is a nice way to use it this really is not going to be useful for any sort of other project because they're small cutoffs and I could just cut out the shape with a plexiglass cutter and then for the top if you're really careful and you cut it off in small segments like I'm doing here you can cut plexi curves at least thin plexi with some aviator snips without snapping it so that's how I cut the curve and then to finally attach these I'm caulking everything into place so they fit in there nicely and now the edges all have will be will be completely closed and then I screw those in from the back side and then I can caulk the base and everything like that as well and then the plexi will pop into place I also put some clear um, silicone caulk around the edges I don't film that but that's all I did to hold them in place so to attach the lazy Susan I'm using um, lazy Susan attachments that I got off of Amazon and this is going to go all the way through you can see this is the cut off from the door that I did the panel I messed up I ended up having a nice piece to make the base so that's what I'm using there and I could just attach the lazy Susan and then I'm going to be putting as you can see bolts through so I put the bolts through first and then I can attach this to to the circular section I have and then just flip it out upside down and those bolts will align with the holes that I drilled earlier and then this is bolted into place and then this base I just cut it so that this um, fits right on top of it there's a little bit of excess because I'll trim out the bottom so I'll cut all that flush eventually and then trim out the bottom and then you can see this spins I also add a metal pole in there I don't know if I film that I can't remember but you can see now it spins just so it's a little bit easier to, to access all the books so then to attach this to the base I at some point this was a couple months ago I sunk a 4x4 into a bucket um, I did not film that so this is sunk into a bucket it was about a bag and a half of concrete so it was bigger than a four gallon a five gallon bucket so it was pretty big and now I'm just gonna cut some curves out of the front and bottom just so the bracing on top um, if you attach stuff like this with just screws over time it might have a tendency to sag or pull apart because of the elements so now the two by fours that this is going to be sitting on top of have a ledge to sit on top of and it'll stay truer that way so with the two by four I'm just cutting out a shallow lap so that um because the two by four is a little bit thicker than the ledge I created and then temporarily I'm just screwing these into place I'll go through later and replace all these screws with with uh, 5 8 inch dowels but while it's glue while the glue is setting up it's it's easiest to just put some screws in there so then I'm gonna put a 45 on the edge 45s are really important with construction like this it'll make it so these parts just can't move and then I lap joint to the top of the 45 as well so that it fits into place and that was pretty easy I just cut the 45 based off the pencil measurements you saw and then for the thickness of the 2x4 I just calculated it and cut some laps this looks like a very dangerous cut but I can assure you my hand is much further away from the blade than it looks like um, on this camera depth perception can be really deceptive deceptive in these videos and then I could glue these into place as well once again I'll attach these with screws and then replace them with some dowels and then this kind of fits on top and this was the initial putting it up there to make sure everything was gonna fit it was nice because my bolts cleared cleared the base just enough that it worked out perfectly so then for the front door I'm attaching just some poplar with some bridle joints I have a tenoning jig this is this was pretty easy to do with the way the roof is set up like I said it didn't have a very big overhang that kind of left me with only one option which was to make an inset door otherwise the door would have sat um, out further than than the uh, roof and I didn't want water to pool on the top of it so I just basically measured the inside I gave myself a substantial reveal because the door will swell when it gets wet and I don't want it to get stuck 
and then um, I just, like I said, cut those those bridle joints and those tenons, and then I put a, a small rabbet on the inside, and that will be for the plexi that will go in place. And then I could just glue all these together, check for square, sink some brads in it while while it dries. And then to attach this, I'm just adding screws from the bottom. So from this point on, some of the footage is missed. Uh, I didn't film as much and it gets kind of fast just because, um, like I said, originally my sister's birthday was, was kind of long ago. You can see these are the hinges. I'm, these are actually partial inset hinges I'm using, but they have the snap on them with the spring and I wanted those in order to keep the door closed. So I just cut out a rabbit on the edge of the door. You can see there in order to use those for the inset application. And then um, I decided to trim out the door with some molding just so it looked a little bit nicer. But um, like I was saying, the, the, the footage, some of it's missing and I didn't film as much because her birthday was in September and I was finally delivering this on Halloween. So towards the end, um, filming took a back seat. So I just added a bunch of spray foam on the inside because the brads I used from the roof were sticking through. I didn't want anyone to catch their hand on it, so I had some spray foam. I filled up all these gaps with it. It will also make it a little stronger. And then I'm, I'm painting everything. This is just a regular water-based primer, um, especially with the foam. You do not want to use anything with solvents in it because it will eat the foam. Water-based primer will not. You could also see I added trim to the bottom of this. It's oak trim that I had laying around. I didn't film doing that, but you could kind of see how now there's a ledge on the bottom. For the top, I decided to keep it somewhat natural and just added some stain I had laying around. Um, this is like a decking stain for the top. And then I added some trim to the top as well. I pre-painted these trim pieces to make my life easier. You can see they're just strips of, of trim that I painted black, and then I could go through and, and just eye up the angles and cut them. And I also pre-painted some trim for the edges to cover up that one seam. And then I did not get any of the, the actual painting of this filmed. So this is pretty much the end, end, end piece of the video.